I'm Michael Truly. Tonight on Master Debaters, we turn movie against movie as we pit Wall Street against Wolf of Wall Street in this battle of cocaine, high-powered, money-fueled movies. Which is the better movie? There's only one way to find out, and that's to fast forward six minutes forward on this YouTube video. On my left is Nefertiti Lovelace, a woman who has greed is good tattooed in a place that YouTube won't let her show. And on my right is Michael Cruz, a man who would take any lobster that Leonardo DiCaprio were to offer him. Wall Street, 30 seconds, state your opinion, and why you feel that way about it, go. Wall Street is one of those classic Hollywood films that everyone needs to see. If you haven't seen it, you need to. Um, you know, it's Oliver Stone, who's like one of the preeminent directors of every generation. I mean, whether you agree with his crazy conspiracy theories about the moon landing or whatever, that's neither here nor there, because Wall Street is awesome. It's got Michael Douglas, it's got Charlie Sheen before we even knew how crazy it was going to get. So you can only imagine that he was like outdoing Jordan Belfort behind the scenes on making Wall Street more than Jordan Belfort was like hooking up with hookers and doing blow and getting the candles in his ass in Wolf of Wall Street. Time. Okay, I love Wolf of Wall Street because not only does it have amazing performances from some of the best people today, it's got Leonardo DiCaprio, Jonah Hill, the woman who plays his wife, the chick, the How I Met Your Mother mother, right? Like she left Jordan Belfler and then met Ted. Uh, Scorsese at the top of his game after many years. You've got some of the greatest writing, you've got great visuals, you've got great music. It's long, but it it really like it delves into this like real the, the world in a really uh, uh, emotional and passionate artistic way. Time. <laughs> Real quick, we always talk about Scorsese at the top of his game, but we've been saying that about Scorsese since Mean Street. But I, I think we're past the top. I think the top was about 15 years ago on Goodfellas. So we're talking like a bell mm -hmm. curve with, with the people on the down slope. I think I... Hugo? Okay, all right. Hugo and Shutter Island were... Like, Hugo was, like, I think, like, his kid's movie, if he was ever going to have a kid's movie. I'm not going to offend him because I think it's a piece of crap. But I think it was his kid's movie if he was going to have a kid's movie. And Shutter Island was, like, a bad dream that we should all forget. But don't forget that on your side, you've got Money Never Sleeps. So, they've all had Which hiccups. Which we agreed to strike from the record. From the content record, not from the Oliver Stone record. <laughs> but... Um, but I, in terms of like the ups and downs of Martin Scorsese, yeah, he started with Taxi Driver and Raging Bull and Color of Money and Goodfellas, but he hasn't let up. He's got The Departed, he's got The Aviator, and he's the executive producer of Boardwalk Empire. Okay, so, you're just so reading you're just his IMDb. He's one long plateau here. Yeah, I think okay. it's a, I think it's one long plateau with a bunch of hiccups, unlike Oliver Stone, which does go. So you, you'll now have 60 seconds to support your opinion uh, with cold, hard scientific fact. You ready? Okay, yes. Go. All right, so Wall Street is superior to Wolf of Wall Street because Wolf of Wall Street is basically the Miley Cyrus of movies. It's like, look at how outrageous I am. And after 90 minutes of twerking and sticking your tongue out, we've seen it, we get it. How many times do we need to see you do this again? It's no longer outrageous. It's, it's just boring after a point. Whereas Wall Street actually has the character development to get you engrossed in the movie so that when things happen, you can actually have an emotional reaction to them. It's impossible to become numb to something if you haven't seen it yet. Whereas if you've seen the same thing over and over, it's just like, well, all right, well, what, what else are you going to do? When you have a, you know, five-minute scene about how best to throw midgets at a dartboard, at that point, you're just being outraged for the sake of being outrageous. And even if it is based on things that actually happened, it doesn't really matter because I'm not invested. I'm completely detached from this having any basis in reality and being relatable to me as a human being. Time. Uh, Cruz, 60 seconds to support your opinion uh, for Wolf of Wall Street with cold hard scientific fact or unflinching feeling. Okay. Go. So I think that, you know, Wolf of Wall Street has gotten a lot of crap for being this, like, never-ending parade of, 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 like, douche, douche, douchebaggery, right? And, like, it, you, 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 you don't, it doesn't have enough character, it doesn't have enough structure in order to, for it to be emotionally engaging. I love Wall Street. Like, we're not debating whether Wall Street was a bad movie, right? I think Wall Street was a great movie, but I think it needs, it, like, holds your hand in a very 80s way through the story and through the emotion. And it plays in in some ways to to some people today I think better because it plays into the narrative like the American narrative of victimization that like oh this guy got pulled down the rabbit hole by Gordon Gecko and Gordon Gecko's the villain and we can blame him well I think that like Wolf of Wall Street captures the emotion of the reality of what's going on in a much more realistic way by throwing this fantastical douchebaggery at you and, and ooh 
I don't know what that was. You ready? Yeah, I do agree with you that the audience is indeed taking pleasure in watching these antics for the entire time of the movie. And the whole point that Scorsese is making, I believe at least, is that he is making a commentary on us participating in watching the celebration and enjoying it for three fucking hours. It doesn't need to be that long, quite frankly. And while Wall Street is in certain ways dated because it sort of relies on that sort of classic Hollywood structure of a protagonist and a villain, it's the same lifestyle. It's just that Wall Street isn't focusing on, hey, look at us partying for three hours on yachts with lobsters. Instead, it's focusing on the other side of the story, which I personally find more compelling. It's, it's about the inner struggle of coming into something that promises a life that you never thought you could have for yourself and all the consequences that go with it. Jordan Belfort never really has any tangible consequences. In fact, the celebration continues to the end where uh, he barely does any prison time whatsoever. We literally see him playing tennis in jail and then uh, he's continuing his new scam as like a financial... Uh, um... A Tony Robbins. Yeah, he's a Tony Robbins by the end. <laughs> Time. And look, I, I like I agree with all of the things that you say about Wall Street, but 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 that but that's exactly why I think this is better, right? It's that it's that because like if you look at like if you look at Oliver Stone's work, he's really focused on like history and politics and education, and it's, it kind of does it in this really preachy way. Charlie Sheen goes through like a winning redemption, and you get to go through this journey and learn the morality tale of of the dangers of Wall Street and the but dangers then he also goes to of jail. the dangers of money, and he goes to he goes to jail, but like he learns his lesson, and we. As, as America also learn our lesson. And I think the reality and the harshness of Wolf of Wall Street is that we didn't. We didn't back in the 80s, we did it today. And I think that anybody who gets upset at like feeling complicit with Wolf of Wall Street is because they feel complicit. And the reality is that we all are. We all are complicit with what's going on. We all are complicit with glorifying this like, this like, attitude. He um, does explore these bad boys. He I agree that the main idea behind Wolf is that if we could live this lifestyle, we all would do it. But I'm too much of an optimist. I have too much faith in humankind to think that there's not at least a good number of people out there who wouldn't punch their wives in the stomach and rip people off you know, on such a huge scale. I mean, Jordan Belfort, the real guy, still hasn't even repaid the people he ripped off completely. Does Leonardo DiCaprio have a shot at Best Actor? Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio is fantastic in Wolf of Wall Street. He, I mean, one of the best things about that movie is his performance alone, despite my own issues with it being really, really redundant. I feel like the Academy has a chip on their shoulder about him. They're like, you know what? He f***s models, and he looks like Leonardo DiCaprio. He has <coughs> He doesn't need an Oscar, too. So I don't think he's ever going to get it. I think McConaughey's going to win it because he's had like this renaissance of like McConaughey dumb, where he's actually doing really good movies, and all of a sudden, like, it's just like, wait, isn't that the same guy who did Fool's Gold? Cruz, do you think Leonardo DiCaprio has a shot at Best Actor? It's McConaughey's year. I mean, uh, a Dallas Buyers Club and Mud and uh, True Detective are all like it, it's like it's like it's like uh, it's like the last twenty years of Matthew McConaughey's life have been a, 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 a like an inside joke. You have fifteen seconds to tell me how you would improve Wolf of Wall Street or wax poetic about how perfect Wall Street is. The way to fix Wolf of Wall Street is to actually have a character arc. That's all I need. Just have a character arc. He doesn't change at all. <laughs> all right. Okay. I would not improve the, the original Wall Street. I think it was good for its time. In terms of Wolf of Wall Street, I would improve it by telling people to grow some fucking balls and deal with it and like deal with their own emotions. The character doesn't need to change as long as you deal with what effect it has on you. Time. Okay, so uh, to round up a couple of your points. T, uh, <laughs> Oliver Stone. <laughs> Nice. Came up with that myself. Yeah, I don't remember saying that. Uh, Wolf equals Miley Cyrus. Yes. Uh, you fuck models, no Academy Award for you. Nope. Cruz, American narrative of victimization. Yeah. Uh, Wall Street is a morality tale. It's yeah. interesting. Uh, the audience in Wolf is complicit. I can live with that. The devil wears Prada. Do with those what you want. That's what I took away from this. That's all for us here on Master Debaters. Uh, I'd like to thank our guests. You can check out T's show, Fridays. That's Movie Buzz. Uh, it's a really fun drinking show that has to do with movies, if you haven't seen it already. Uh, you can check out Cruz from various videos throughout the channel. He's on Cinefix now quite a bit. Um, click on who you think won the debate. Uh, this is a new thing we're doing on Master Debaters. Uh, go ahead and click on who you think won and uh, let us know. Uh, and... 
Come back next Thursday for more Master Debaters. I'm not going to throw my paint because I'm in a good mood. That's a letdown.